Hi, everyone. My name is Josh Zimmerman from GitLab Learning Development. I'm joined here with Sid Sebrandi, our co-founder and CEO. And today we're going to be talking about high output management. It's a book by Andy Grove, and it is our CEO's favorite. Um, there's a lot of great management practices that we've extracted from that book and actually applied it into GitLab. So I wanted to bring Sid along on the call to talk about the book, what it means for GitLab, and discuss some of the topics at a high level. Um, Sid, thank you so much for joining us here today. Really appreciate your time. Thanks for having me and thanks for organizing this. Awesome. So, you know, the book uh, High Output Management, it was written in 1983, I think, as the first uh, version. And I think since then, there's been multiple copies and updates as time has progressed. But I'm curious, you know, when did you first learn about the book and why did you choose to read it? I'm not particularly fond of reading books because it's such a big time investment and most books should have been a blog post instead. Um, but this was recommended to me by so many people that at some point I caved and said, okay, I'll, I'll read it. And it was totally worth it. Um, it was dense and action packed and uh, I loved it. Uh, I think it contains so many very valuable lessons uh, that it should be every, anyone in management in a commercial organization or for-profit organization should read this book and probably also not for profits. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. And you mentioned, you know, you think um, some management books could be just a blog post and maybe they're stretched out into a whole book, but I'm curious, you know, could we dive a little diff deeper into maybe what's different about this book than other management books that you've read? I think that's exactly it. And I think other management book always do this kind of generic business advice. I'm actually keeping, keep, keeping a small note and we haven't prepped this, but I'll see if I can find it of like, yes, I, I know that if I spent more time, I'll do better on the subject. If I study the literature, I'll do better. If I ask experts, if I do many meetings about it, if I evaluate it, if I add it to the responsibilities of people, like I can go on if I add it to performance metrics, if I talk about it and communicate it repeatedly, if I give trainings, if I have a strong kickoff, if I begin with the end in mind, all of these work for anything you want to do in life, but it costs time. So give me something that doesn't require me to spend extra time. Give me actual useful advice where I can achieve more in the same amount of time, because that's, that's what's needed. And I think that's a lot of that is in this book without anything of the generic advice that you could give for any subject. Completely agree. I felt like for me reading it for the first time, it was the most black and white management book I have ever read. And I, I felt I, I gained a really better understanding of GitLab's organizational design, sort of our management approach. Um, I feel like there's a lot of themes covered in the book that we've applied within GitLab. So I'm curious, which topics resonated with you the most? Yeah, um, I think um, he talks a lot about dual reporting structures and how they're bad and you should avoid them as long as you can. That's been really influential. And to this day, you will see that GitLab is a functionally organized organization without a matrix organization. In fact, on our leadership page, we have a, we link to a whole page about no matrix organization. That's straight out of that book. And I've been very surprised on how far we could make this work. Like when I started the company, I thought over a thousand people, I'm not going to be able to hold the line. But I think through stable counterparts and to, through a categorization of like what people work on and, and uh, making sure it's easy to find people, uh, we've been able to make it work. And I think it's been hugely beneficial in our uh, efficiency and speed of execution. Yeah, completely agree. I, I felt like the dual reporting structure chapters, I, I felt like I was reading, you know, some of our handbook pages as I was going through those chapters. Um, definitely. And I, I also feel like the the one to one meeting between a manager and a direct report is really a central tool for leading teams covered in the book. I know at GitLab, they're really a fundamental core component to how managers and their direct reports work with one another. So I'm curious, did the book give you ideas on how to structure one-to-one -one meetings at GitLab? Yeah, for sure. 
And first of all, it's, it's an essential tool. Like as a manager, you leverage yourself through your reports. So that's everything. Like when I heard in other organizations that managers have a call with their reports every two weeks, every three weeks, I think that's bonkers. I think that doesn't make any sense. How are you going to achieve maximum leverage if you're not communicating very closely with your reports? Then the second thing I learned is uh, in the book, they talk about the level of detail depends on the person. And I think that's a very good observation. If someone's new, you micromanage, and then you go to meso manage, and then you go to macro manage. But I think one thing we're doing in addition in GitLab is it doesn't just depend on the person, it also depends on the subject. Someone might be very experienced, but something might be new to them. So at GitLab in the agenda, we also have sections that contain like very fundamental things like feedback. But we also have a section about hallway, just like this is not important, but we're going to go dive into it because I think you might not be seeing something or, or something uh, I think might be interesting to you. So uh, the book says vary the style per person, totally agree, but also vary it per subject that you're discussing. Yeah, completely agree. And I, and I think one thing that um, Andy does in the book as well is he recommends depending on the task relevant maturity of your direct reports on certain activities, it's okay to schedule more than one one-to-one -one a week. You know, depending on how sort of competent somebody is with doing a job as a manager, it's okay to spend more time with them, training them and upskilling them on, on how to do that job. Very much. Like if someone just onboards in the organization, even if they're extremely experienced beforehand, like have three one-on-ones through the week and have them say, look, I, I don't, we can reduce the frequency if you make, instead of you making that call, it's your job to be available to them and make sure they run the meeting. Like they should prep for the meeting. They should run it. They should allocate time in the meeting. My best reports take ownership of the meeting and walk me through it and they use it as an opportunity. So that's uh, really important that it feels like their meeting and not yours. Completely agree. Yeah, I think I think one of the quotes in there is that uh, a manager should do 20% of the talking, direct report does 80%. That's extremely hard, but that is the goal. That is the goal. I'm not so, sure I totally agree with that goal because I think if you're, there should be some teaching and learning and, and but I, I think it's very important that the initiative and the directive is with the report to a huge extent that the report says, hey, we got to discuss this because this is important and urgent. Yeah, completely agree. You know, and, and moving on, you know, as a, as a learning and development professional, I really love the chapter on training as the boss's job. And, and this really put ownership that managers you know, should be spending a lot of their time developing their team members on key skills. You know, it's carving out time within the day to upskill and reskill your people on how to do their job now and in the future. And I think, you know, as GitLab moves forward, training can be led and owned by managers. And it's already doing so in that regard, respectively, with a lot of teams. So what can managers do to teach their team members new skills and make time for learning? Yeah, I think, again, it's important that the initiative <clears throat> is with the report. So, for example, we just had the self-assessments for my reports and the section had development, like what skills do you want to grow? And there were great suggestions in there. I want to do more external events and I need media training. I want to get a coach. I want to I welcome opportunities to take a board seat someplace else. So ask about it and great reports will have an idea. Also surface opportunities. Recently, there was a board seat at an organization that became available, was offered to me, but we looked at it. We thought it also was appropriate for reports. So we offered the opportunity to a report. Like it's, you want to leverage yourself and give the, your reports the opportunity to, to grow. So service opportunities, make it a formal part of uh, career development and work with them and indicate blind spots. Hey, you might be really good at this, but let's see how we can, how we can get better at this. Maybe find an expert to, to help you. I believe in, in coaches that are external to the company as well. I have one and some of my reports have one. Yeah, 
That's a great point. I think I think the area around servicing uh, opportunities as well is really important. Our handbook has so much information, and you know, GitLab we've invested in you know, LinkedIn learning, a new learning experience platform. I think as a manager, you can carve out time to point your employees to those resources uh, that are relevant to their job as well, using what we have internally uh, that we already have available as well. Yeah, it's very important to agree with the report on like what are the skills they need to develop. And if you can get agreement between the manager and the report on what that is, you solved half the problem and then be proactive in, in, in pointing out ways to, uh, to build that skill. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, you know, I feel like in the book, there's, there's so many topics covered uh, regarding management, but I did feel like one area that maybe was lacking a little bit was around emotional intelligence. And I feel like as a people leader, it's really critical to be in tune with your people's, you know, well-being on a personal and a professional level. And the way to do that is through emotional intelligence, getting to know your people on an individual level. You know, it's one thing to be really technically proficient, but it's another thing to be both technically proficient and emotionally intelligent. So I'm curious, you know, if you shared this perspective on having emotional intelligence as a leader is, is important in leading teams. Yeah, for sure. It's important. And uh, the book might have, like, it would be a better book if there was more time dedicated to that. I think one very important emotional intelligence skill is like the level at which you manage your report, yeah, the varying between the macro, meso and micro and management, depending on the report and the subject matter. So I think that's, that's a very important skill that I don't, I, I, I see a lot of books that say, well, emotional intelligence is important. And then they lack concrete advice other than that it's, it's important and, and some generic advice. So I think it's, that is a very important emotional intelligence part, which is uh, called out rightly in the book, but could be more. And I think we've, uh, we've also learned since the eighties uh, about uh, everything that goes into management. Uh, that, yeah, that's a great point. I think since, you know, the, the, Times, times have changed so much that emotional intelligence has become, you know, more and more important as we've studied, you know, management. So, you know, lastly, I'm curious, you know, why would you recommend managers and team members to read this book? Yeah, I think it's super important. You learn about why an organization is structured as it is. You learn about how to structure meetings, but also you learn it's all about timing. Like the hard thing in management is not to do any individual task. The, the hard thing is making them all happen on time with the limited amount of time you have to invest in them. It's a t management is a timing problem. Any management problem can be solved with more attention. The question is, and then the book, it's the breakfast factory. How do you make sure everything is finished at the same time? And I think that's super important. And also a lot of, GitLab policies are either directly from the book or they were an inspiration for, for the GitLab policy. For example, he talks a lot about the power dynamics between uh, consensus and hierarchy. We took that and we made that into a, a decision-making model where we say we are a consensus organization when we're in the information gathering stage and we are a hierarchy when we need to make a decision. There's a single DRI and they make the decision. And I think in that way, we're, we're going beyond uh, the book. But I think the book is uh, a great foundation for anyone who has to manage people. Yeah, I completely agree. And anyone watching this uh, who is a GitLab team member, you are able to expense the book. Um, I would recommend you know grabbing a copy anytime you can. You can get it at Amazon or any other book uh, distributor, but you can expense the book uh, and definitely read it. I know for me, I got a ton out of just understanding GitLab more and understanding, you know, where this company is and, and you know, how, how we created a lot of these policies and processes. So thank you so yeah, much. Don't be Sid, like me. Time. Don't wait for five people to recommend that this is a business <laughs> book to read. If you've ever read a business book and you haven't read this, you read the wrong one. So start with this one. Totally agree. Well, thank you so much, Sid, for your time. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you.